So welcome everybody. I'm just uh, sort of doing a list of comparison of names with those who um, registered with me. Um, so I'm Andrea Betty. I'm the Director of Planning for the Town of Penetanguishene. Um, and I think um, we have most everybody here to join in. So um, others will join in if possible as we, we move forward. So I guess I will get to uh, to hand it over to Mishi who's going to lead us through this and um, just wanted to welcome everybody and, and get Mishi started on, on tonight's workshop. Thanks a lot, Andrea. So first off, um, thank you everyone for joining. We have a really big group tonight, which is great. Um, if you'd like to change the name that appears on your uh, on your screen, there's three little dots that should be associated with your little screen, and you can rename yourself. So if, if it's a phone number or um, if you'd like to give an alternative name, that you can do so uh, in that with that function. So um, with that, I'm going to pass things off to David, and uh, he's going to lead us with some introductions. Um, before we get started on the presentation. Thanks. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Mishi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up um, the presentation. I'll share the screen. And actually, first, I'm going to turn over to, to Ed, Ed Sajeki from Sajeki Planning. And, and he's going to do the very initial introductions. And, and then I'll start in introductions. And you know, we'll, we'll be done introductions around 7.38. And, and then we'll say, say goodbye. But no, we, I'm just kidding. We have a very exciting um, workshop today, and I want to thank everybody very much for coming and, and participating because it's absolutely critical to um, this extremely exciting study that is just kicking off now. But with that, I am going to share my screen and, and turn it over to Ed. Well, again, it's it's wonderful to be here again with the uh, with with the council, you, Mary Lou, and members of the council, and also. A special thanks to Jeff Lees and, and to Andrea Betty for, for their, their cooperation and assistance uh, in, in putting all this together. Um, th this is very exciting and the, the, the visioning workshop is really the kind of the guts going forward in terms of, of, of laying the foundation in, uh, as, to, as, to, as to future work. And it's just a, a, a wonderful opportunity to have an opportunity to, to talk to the public as well as, as as members of council and senior staff on this. I'm, I'm just going to go be very, very short and just say thank you again. We're, we're very excited about this project. So back to back to David. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Ed. And, and, and to introduce myself, my name is David Sajaki uh, with Sajaki Planning. And we're the lead consultant on... Um, the, the secondary plan for the town dock. And, and just reiterating what Ed, Ed was saying, we, it's an absolute jewel um, um, for, for a Penetang machine um, and for the larger uh, Simcoe County and the larger area. So we've been visiting the area and, and for, I mean, dec decades. I'm um, just very happy to be part of the study. So today, though, is really about um, kicking off public consultation for the work and to hear everyone's input in, term, in terms of what you see as opportunities and constraints and to help us develop um, that vision and guiding principle for the site. So we're going to divide the presentation today up into three parts. Uh, I'm going to start it. I'm then going to, and I'll, I'll be just describing a bit of the background. Uh, the context and history for the study and the timelines and schedule. It's a pretty um, quick, quick study to get to the recommendations, which will be um, in June of this year. And then I'm going to turn it over to uh, Dylan, uh, Dylan Dewsbury, also from Sajaki Planning. He's going to speak to what is a vision. Um, this is a visioning workshop today. So what is it that we hope to accomplish from the vision for the for the waterfront? Um, at well for the town dock portion of the waterfront and also walk through some precedents and best, best practices from uh, waterfront master plans both locally um, and across Canada with with some international examples and then Dylan is going to turn it over to Mishi McCloskey who uh, is also from Sajaki planning and will be the facilitator and the, the lead um, MC for for the night and just before we get started I just do want to mention one thing the initial plan um, for tonight was to have a series of breakout rooms um, but just working through through the technology uh, we've realized that it's actually going to be easier tonight to do it all as one room so Mishi earlier asked that everybody um, that everybody make sure that their name is identified on on their um, on their zoom account because she'll be 
identifying people and pulling them out so that we can get your input throughout the night. And so if you can just raise your hand, Mishi has a full screen where she can, she'll be able to see everybody that is participating today and we'll be calling you out. And, and Dylan from our team will be recording in live time everybody's information. And if for whatever reason um, you wish to not verbally uh, just, just provide your input, there's also a chat function and Sarah Marshall from the town will be monitoring that, that chat room. And so all of that input will be recorded tonight and it's very important to us as, as we move forward. So we will also be releasing a summary report from tonight that will be summarizing everything that we've heard. So just in terms of a few uh, virtual workshop tips, uh, the session will be recorded tonight. Um, as I mentioned, please ensure to mute yourself unless of course you are speaking. And that is a little uh, microphone button in the, the left-hand side of the screen. Um, and as I mentioned again too, during the, the question and answer period and activities, please share your feedback verbally, or you also have the option of typing your comment using the chat function. And if you are experiencing any technical difficulties today, uh, please send a message to Sarah Marshall. Uh, the best way is likely to reach her by the chat function. Um, you can, if you need, also email her at smarshall at penetanguishing.ca. So in terms of who we are, um, we're, we're the consultant team is, we have a, a very large group that is here today. We have Ed Sajeki, David Sajeki, uh, Dylan and Mishi, who we introduced. Uh, we also have Elise Camo, who if there are any questions in, in French, um, she, she's more than happy to, to um, answer those questions and, and to translate as well. Uh, we also have Jerry uh, Sang from the Sajeki planning team. And from Strategy Corp, we have Aiden Grove White. So Sajeki planning is leading the overall study and looking at um, sort of the land uses, the, the new buildings um, that, that, that we'll consider as we move forward with the work. We also have Strategy Corp, who is the, um, their focus is really on economic development and looking at what are ways to really revitalize um, the town dock and, and thinking of economic opportunities between the town dock and, and Main Street. Um, we have Lura has been working with us on public consultation engagement um, and advising us throughout the study. And we also have Scribe, um, which will just be helping us in terms of ensuring that the communications are, are, are clear and, and more easily understood. So in terms of context, uh, the town dock, roughly what you can see as our study area is the image on the right. Um, it includes the, 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 the town dock lunch. Uh, it includes the, the boat launch. It includes the areas for, um, and I'll use my cursor as well too. It includes the areas uh, for, um, uh, for parking, um, both directly within and adjacent to, to the, the town dock lunch, but also within the larger unpaved area that leads to the boat launch. It includes the tourist information center. It includes the Georgia Queen. And that generally makes up um, the study area, but we also have to consider very much how we connect to, to, to different areas, such as uh, uh, Rotary Champlain Park um, and, and Main Street and, and the downtown. So the site was identified in the 2019-2023 Community Strategic Plan as an area of particular importance. Um, and within that plan, it included the strategic direction to maximize the economic potential of the waterfront and to explore um, redevelopment options for the waterfront properties, including the town dock area, which is largely municipally owned, although there are some areas um, such as the, the town dock lunch that, that are owned privately. Um, the site is identified in the official plan as a future study area and funding for this project is through a grant from the County of Simcoe. So what is a secondary plan? A secondary plan is a document that looks to the future and it provides, it's more detailed than an official, well, it's fourth part of the official plan, but it's a more detailed component of the official plan that zones, that zooms in on a real specific area. It talks about the types of uses that should be allowed within the secondary plan area. It talks about new public spaces and how you can encourage new public spaces. Um, it provides direction on the types of buildings and the location of buildings. 
and also looks at transportation, both in terms of parking, um, but also really urban design direction around how we can improve the functioning and the look of, of public and private spaces. So the study purpose is really to lay the foundation for an exceptional town dock and waterfront for all seasons. Uh, we would like to see a town dock that celebrates the town's history and culture, fosters linkages to parkland in the downtown, and enhances continued public access to the waterfront. The study area, which I was describing earlier, is 2.8 hectares in site. Um, it is directly connected to the Rotary Champlain Wendat Park um, and is in close proximity to, to downtown uh, via Main Street. Existing uses, um, I already talked about these as well, but it's the wharf and launch ramp. There's the tourist information center. Um, there, there's obviously the restaurant on site and there's a, a large area that is used for parking. At times throughout the year, it's, it's very busy for parking and other times it, it's um, less busy. The history of the site is that it was reclaimed land. It was originally uh, a steamboat wharf. Um, recently, there have been a number of capital improvements to the site, uh, improvements to Main Street in, in, in the order of $10.6 million uh, that really connect the, the, the town dock to, to downtown Main Street and have had uh, significant improvements to public art to the sidewalks. Um, there's also a 3.8 million transformation of Rotary Champlain Wendat Park, and it is recognized that the wharf substructure will need a, um, a fairly significant capital upgrade in the future. In terms of our schedule, it's a five phase project. Uh, right now we are in phase two, so we have focused so far really just on background review, um, having the work plan and, and, and the consultation plan um, prepared. Today is really the kickoff of the study, looking at um, what, how can we start to gather ideas around vision and guiding principles. Uh, we'll very quickly in, in February and March be moving into creating a master plan and policy directions. And those will include both two-dimensional and three-dimensional visualizations of what the town dock can look like. Um, following, I, I would say, March, will be moving towards drafting what are the actual policies, so the text within the document, um, as well as the schedules for the secondary plan, and, and looking to finalize everything in, in phase five by, by June of this year. In terms of where we are today and how to get involved, um, today is a visioning workshop. Uh, there'll be an online virtual public consultation that will be taking place in March, and that will be really uh, helping us to shape what is the master plan itself for the uses. Um, so that, that will be up for a period of time and you'll be able to input directly in terms of um, what you would like to see on the site and, and how changes can be made from initial plans. Uh, again, I went through the rest of the schedule, but there'll be a committee of the whole a public meeting in early May 2021. Um, we'll be using input from that to finalize a secondary plan and uh, the intention is to present the plan um, at council in, in June of this year. Um, work undertaken today has really, again, just been about uh, a project kickoff, a site visit, understanding um, everything we can gather in terms of background materials. Um, and that's what part of tonight is as well too, just understanding um, from you really what it is that you like about the site and, and where you think there can be improvements. So, and putting that into our background work before we really move on to identifying what are the seven or so big moves that we think have a huge impact in terms of the, the town dock that we would like to see and drafting that master plan. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dylan and, and Dylan, please just let me know when you'd like me to change slides. Thanks, David. So as the title suggests, uh, part of the purpose of today's workshop is to develop a vision for the town doc uh, before we move on to the next stages. So what is a vision? A vision reflects the community's goals, priorities and aspirations for the future. Um, a vision will describe how the town doc should look in the future and, um, and feel in years to come. So the vision is important because uh, it will help to create a foundation for the secondary plan and influence how the policies are developed. So what we hear in the activities later on will inform how we approach the next stages of the project. Um, so we're looking forward to hearing your input um, before we move on. 
Uh, next slide, David. So the following slides are based on our initial proposal um, to the town and some of the precedents that we've been looking at for best practices in public waterfront development. Um, they represent some of the initial ideas, but are really intended just to get people thinking about what makes a great waterfront and what you might like to see at the town dock in the future. So first is the idea of an interactive and engaging public realm. Uh, this image is a waterfront boardwalk in Oslo in Norway. And what we like about this example is the way in which people are interacting with the boardwalk. Um, there is an option to sit at a restaurant, um, have a, something to eat or a drink, or walk along the boardwalk. And then there's a number of places to sit and meet up with people as well. Um, on the public furniture you see there, or on the steps down to the waterfront where you can enjoy the view. So it encourages people to not only pass through, but to stay and enjoy the space. Next slide. We believe that it's important to ensure there is continuous public access to the water. The image on the left, oh, this is an old slide deck. <laughs> um, used to be Aurelia, um, where there's a, a boardwalk that continues all the way along the water. And the image on, or the image that's shown is Halifax, uh, where there's a 4.4 kilometer boardwalk uh, that stretches the length of um, the waterfront there. And it's, um, that's completely open to the public. So even though it's built up and there's restaurants and privately owned land, um, the actual waterfront itself is available to everyone. Next slide. The plan should reflect the town's history and culture. Uh, so this could manifest in many different forms by incorporating physical features such as um, this fire circle at Lake Ontario on the right, or symbols of public art and sculptures uh, such as the spirit catcher in Barry, or opportunities for education in a refurbished uh, tourist information center. Next slide. Uh, a key goal of the strategic, uh, hang on, this is another. Um, so a fo it should be a focal point uh, connected to downtown and parklands and um, that'll capitalize on the recent investment the town's made in uh, Rosary Champlain, Wendat Park and Main Street. Um, so here we see Aurelia on the left and Niagara on the lake on the right, um, where there's strong connections to the rest of the town as well as adjacent parkland. Um, so there's trails and pathways, uh, cycle paths for people to move through the spaces. Uh, next slide. So a key goal of the strategic plan uh, that David mentioned earlier was to maximize the economic potential of the municipal waterfront. So this image represents just one idea that's come up so far, uh, which is to introduce temporary installations, such as pop-up markets or shops, um, perhaps in shipping containers, as we've seen in this image. So this example is in Brooklyn, um, but the idea has been carried out successfully in lots of European towns and cities, um, as well as right here in Toronto. And uh, so this could be part of a phased approach um, towards a more permanent structure in the future, uh, but it enables just an initial first step that we could um, then assess the success of and um, yeah, it can, it can be flexible moving forward. Next slide. So we envision uh, exceptional town dock in all uh, seasons. So this example here is from Prince Arthur's Landing in Thunder Bay. And um, the, the image that's shown is a skating rink, um, but it actually functions as a splash pad in summer. So it's a flexible space that can be used in um, different seasons. Um, so we just, I mean, not to be specific about a skating rink or a splash pad, um, but it's just an, something to get us thinking about um, what uses can we see in perhaps the shoulder seasons, um, not just summer and winter, um, but just uses that will draw people to the town dock in all seasons. Uh, next slide. So the town dock will be an entry point to Penetanguishing from the water. Um, and what the image that we've shown here is um, Gravenhurst, and that shows the approach that you would see as you arrive from boat. Um, so there's a coherent message between like the, the structures of the, um, the structure at the end of the dock and, and ties into the buildings. And I'm not sure if you can see on the image, but there's a, 
um, a sign above the structure at the end of the dock that announces that you've arrived in Gravenhurst. Uh, so it's just a, a very welcoming and inviting arrival to Gravenhurst from the water. So we're just thinking about uh, ways that we can do that in Penetang Machine as well. Next slide. So the Project for Public Places is a non-profit organisation that's dedicated to creating and sustaining public places that build communities. They've developed a power of 10 concept, and the idea is that uh, there should be 10 reasons to visit a place. Uh, the image again shows Prince Arthur's landing in Thunder Bay. And you can see in the picture that there's multiple reasons to, to visit. Um, so there's people sitting and the chairs provided, having a picnic, uh, there's kids playing on the splash pad, um, there's the docks for the boats, um, and then in the building there's a restaurant and retail uses. And then just on the right there, you can see some public art. So there's many uh, aspects of um, the development that you know, draw people in and there's lots of reasons to visit and stay. Um, so we'd also like to get people thinking about, um, you know, there's some uses that are already very popular at the town dock, um, which we'd also like to hear about. But then, you know, what other new, new uses or um, attractions can be drawing people in? Next slide. So now I'll hand it over to Mishi to go through the activities. Thanks, Dylan. Um, maybe before that, um, if you just go back to the activity slide, uh, we did have a question pop up in the chat. Um, is the dock launch area available to change? Um, so at this stage, we're keeping it very high level. We want to think about the site and its connectivity to the rest of the town, to the to you know the downtown to the park surrounding um, as far as those that level of detail we're not getting to that quite yet um, we just want to make sure that the site functions from a, a very high level and we'll get into the more granular um, recommendations further on down the down the down the line um, david i don't know if you wanted to add anything to, sure. to that <clears throat> sure no i'd be happy to and the, the town of penitent machine we want to say something as well too but you know, at this point, I would say that um, the what is critical is ensuring that the boat launch functions and it doesn't lose that functionality, but how that space is used, um, and, and particularly the, um, the parking lot leading up to the boat launch, I would say that at this point, it's so early on that everything um, is at the visioning stage that I would say that everything is on the table and we want to hear everything. We know that the importance of the town of the boat launch and that it needs to be there, um, but exactly how it functions, I would say everything is on the table. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Okay, so uh, maybe we'll move on to the activity slide. So, um, so what we're going to do today is we're actually going to be using an online whiteboard. Um, you know, if this was in person, uh, we would be posting sticky notes all over the wall and breaking up into mini groups. Um, but, you know, obviously in a virtual setting that changes things a little bit, but we have this great tool called Mural. Um, which I'll share with you in a minute um, after we switch up the screens. And basically we're gonna take you through uh, three different activities. Um, so the first, so essentially activity one and two are um, a SWOT analysis. Um, you may have heard of SWOT analysis, it's basically the same thing, but strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and, and challenges. So um, those will be the first two activities. Um, the difference is activity one, we're just focusing on the, the existing conditions, the current conditions. Whereas at activity two, we're thinking about the future. So um, we'd really like you to keep that in mind as we go through the activities, because you might be thinking of all these great ideas popping into your head of, you know, oh, I want this or I want that, or this would be great. But we'd like you to really try and save that for activity two. Um, obviously there will be some, uh, you know, maybe some ideas that pop up ahead of time. That's fine. Um, and Mural is very flexible. So we'll, what we're, what's going to happen is I'm going to take you through the activities. Um, as David mentioned previously, we'd like everyone to remain on mute. However, if you'd like to speak, um, we're just going to go kind of round table and unmute yourself and contribute you know, verbally that way. Um, we also have Elise here who speaks French. So if you prefer to ask um, a question in French or, or comment in French, um, by all means, Elise can, can help us there. Uh, and, then, um, and then we'll be going on to uh, you know, the, the last activity, which is a, a very quick, 
um, kind of high level visioning exercise. We're just going to draw out the main themes of, of what was discussed in the first, uh, the first two. So with that, um, maybe what we'll do is, um, Sarah or Andrea, if you could give me control of the screen and I'm going to pull up the mural and Dylan is going to be typing as I'm speaking. Is that, is that good, David? Or would you like to share them? Nishi, can I ask you a question? So well, yeah. if you share your screen, is Dylan able to be typing or should Dylan be sharing his screen and typing as you go? Oh, maybe maybe that makes more sense. Dylan, would you like to share your screen and, and do the typing? And then I'll just take us mm -hmm. through as we as we do that. So maybe as Dylan's setting that up, um, does anybody have any questions? Also, I forgot to mention or reiterate, if you'd like to type your um, question or comment into the chat function, totally fine as well. So any questions yeah. before we get started? All silent on the home front. Okay. Mm -hmm. So activity one, um, we're hoping to spend about 20 minutes on this activity. So um, again, this is focusing on the current conditions, what exists today. Um, we want to identify, you know, what's working well, um, you know, what you like about the town dock um, and the surrounding area, and also perhaps identifying some weaknesses, what's not working well. Um, you know, we also refer to these as pain points um, sometimes. So um, Dylan, if you could take us to the next, or to the zoomed out version of activity one. And I'll, I'll just, just, just remind everybody as well too. So if you can put up your hand and keep yourself on mute, um, Mishi will be monitoring uh, the whole room. And so she'll see your hand raised and um, we'll, we'll, we'll then ask you to, to provide your input. Yeah. So what we'll do is, um, again, if uh, you can start with a strength or a weakness, um, you know, we hope that this will be an engaging discussion. We hope to hear from all of you. If you've called in, you obviously have an opinion. Um, and, and what we'll do is as we, um, as you know, you contribute your feedback, Dylan will write it into a little sticky note. Um, if it's location based, we can put it right on, you know, down at the dock area, or if it's downtown, we've added a few pictures of the downtown. Maybe you can just zoom up a little bit on the photos there, Dylan, just to show everyone what we have. Um, so yeah, again, the views from the downtown. Yeah, do you want to take down Main Dylan? Street? Yeah. It's the dock launch. Uh, the docks in George and Queen. Docks again. Some public art Main Street. And then there's the overall view of the town dock. Yeah, the money shot. <laughs> Um, okay, so maybe with that, um, we'll, we'll open up the floor. So if, you, if you'd like to, um, again, we have a large group, but uh, if someone could kick it off, um, we could really, uh, we'll, we'll start writing down your feedback. So, Denise, I see you're off, uh, you're off mute. So did you oh. have an idea? <laughs> what is that? So one thing, if you're if you have a phone and you also have a screen, you're going to have to mute um, one of those devices so it doesn't do a, an echo. Um, just a heads up. Okay, we have something. Did that work? Did that work? No. Can you? Can you uh, maybe typing the comment and until we get that sorted, that would be great. So we do have uh, something from the chat. So the first one is. Okay, what's working well? Access to asphalt parking lot, dock system, and view of the bay, um, the launching ramp. So Dylan, maybe we can zoom up and just double click um, and a sticky note will show up and uh, we can add in those comments, that's great. Thank you, Councillor. Okay, another one um, from- Sorry. Uh, Ms. what's the first part of that? Oh, the... sure. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a four-part comment there from Councillor. Um, <laughs> so what's working well? So these are positive, um, you know, comments. Access to the asphalt parking, uh, parking lot. Uh, the dock system is another one. Dock system. Um, the view of the bay, which you already accounted for, and the launching ramp. 
So, Council, sure. I don't know if you want to if you want to speak to that a little more by the doc system. What do you mean exactly by that? Just how it functions, um, you know, logistically and and um, you know, boats coming in and out. Is that what you is that what you were referring to? Hi, it's uh, George Vatabonker. Yeah, the, my comments there were the slips are are fairly new and um, they work well. The finger docks uh, are new; they work well. So. The, the system, I think, uh, that was installed um, fairly recently, in my opinion, works well. So that's why I thought I'd list it. Great. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, so moving on. Dave, uh, nice walking trails and great docks. Okay. Um, yeah, I know some members of our team were fortunate enough to get up for a site visit. And honestly, beautiful photos. And, and you can see a kind of a snapshot of it here. Um, and maybe not entirely this the study area itself, but we also a, a really important part of this um, this exercise is to also understand the linkages and the connections to you know areas adjacent to the site leading up to the main street. So um, again, don't be constrained by that exact site area. If there's if there's important connections that go in and out of it, please feel free to share here. Um, so Dylan, did we grab that one? The nice walking trails and great docks. Uh, yes. Awesome. Okay, moving on to John and Carrie. Um, working well, access to downtown and park. Okay, so some positive comments so far. Um, okay, from Denise, the water treatment plant divides the parking lot from the park, which doesn't work. Okay, so we have a, um, I guess it would be a, a weakness. So um, maybe once Dylan is, and I know he's rapidly <laughs> typing, um, maybe what we can do is, um, Dylan, for the weaknesses, we can actually change the color of the sticky to a, a pinkish or red color. Um, uh, so if you double click and add that sticky, um, then it's up on the little yellow section. Yeah, perfect. And we'll just do a different color. Um, okay, so the water treatment plan. Sorry, what was the comment, Mishi? So the comment was the water treatment plant divides the parking lot from the park. So that would be a constraint. Um, okay, moving on to John. Uh, can green area at sewage plant adjacent to parking be part of the plan? So again, um, as mentioned, we're looking at the site from a very holistic standpoint. Um, we are looking, we are considering outside of, you know, this, the study area's borders as far as how it relates to the adjacent lands. Um, you know, uh, maybe David or, or Ed can comment on, you know, um, for things like the, the sewage plant adjacent to the area, which you just see over there on the, on the left side of the screen. Um, any, any ideas or further comments on that, David or Ed? Silence is... I mean, what, what, what we've heard about the sewage plant is, I mean, it, it is one of the elements that, that are on site and, and will be on site. Yeah. Um, what we have heard is that one of the challenges is that at different times during the year, smells, um, unpleasant smells can come from that plant. So we can think around if there are opportunities to mitigate those smells and mitigate the impacts of it. Um, but I, I believe the infrastructure will be in place um, in that spot. Perfect, thank you. So maybe Dylan will just add a sticky about that too, is just the, the smells coming off the sewage treatment plant. Um, okay, lots of comments coming in, this is great. So I'm gonna scroll back up because it's, it's brought me down to the bottom of the comments. Um, Okay, so uh, a strength from, from Dennis. Water access to potentially millions of tourists throughout, um, throughout us and Canada. Okay, so, um, you know, it, it would be, you know, um, water access to, uh, yeah, American, um, U.S. and Canada. It, it goes, it, it spans nationally and internationally. So that's a, that's a great point. Um, okay, <laughs> Gary, not working well. I don't know if Gary wants to um, to expand on on if there's something specifically not working well, or or just generally. Gary, Gary McMullen, do you mind? I'm just going to add as well too, Mishi. If if people do want to um, speak up rather than type, they're more than yeah. welcome to chat. Definitely, definitely. So in this case, um, yeah, Gary, if if you'd like to add anything to to your comment there of not working well. 
um, that would be great just for some more context. If not, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, mute there. <laughs> oh, there excuse go. me. Hit enter oh, no. prematurely, so <laughs> there'll be uh, another comment below it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, not working. Okay, angle, angle parking on Main Street, too short for trucks. Okay, so that would be, maybe Dylan, can you identify on the map where that would be, just so we're clear? I guess it's those ones, Gary, right there on the Main Street. Yes, you often see large trucks, this is Alma and McMullen, we're together, large oh, okay. trucks parked on those angles and it's halfway into the street almost, um, just doesn't seem to give enough room and there's a lot of trucks in town. Okay. Okay, that's a great point. Um, okay, so you have a few items here. So mm -hmm. um, there's also the dock lunch area, uh, not launch, dock lunch area, often underwater. Um, maybe you can expand on that a little bit more. Um, well, quite often it's very flooded there. So uh, obviously when uh, you're talking about future development and, and larger capacity of, of buildings and construction and such, uh, I don't know what, you know, it's just obviously not leveled properly or, or built on solid enough ground. Um, it's, it's quite often underwater and I'm sure that the dock lunch people will tell you that they, they have water problems in that building. Mm, okay. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, okay. And the dog park should be improved. Um, okay. So I guess there's an opportunity to maybe improve um, some of that recreational and park space as well. So, Dylan, are we aware where the dog park is there? I'm not. Is that further this way, perhaps? It's, it's further along in, uh, you know, in the park area. And, okay. um, you know, so I think of it as all of that waterfront kind of area. You go along the trails through the park and you end up at a, a dog park, which is basically a big square fenced in. Um, it could be much more social and, and um, uh, made better for owners who go there and want their dogs to have some social activity. Um, it's all part of that, the park, uh, which I think is a fabulous park, by the way, everything about it. Uh, it's got lots of fitness activities, recreation, cultural, um, you know, they really did a bang up job with that. I, I, um, any, any visitors I have, I bring there and they're in awe, um, very well done. But there's a couple of pieces, as I say, that the dog park, you know, and part of that walkway is, is missing. Okay, great. So, so some, um, oh, thanks there. Um, so yeah, so it sounds like there's some, some great aspects about the park, but then some, some small areas of improvement, just like the dog park. Um, okay, moving on, we're going to go to Lois. So uh, great docks, but limiting to accommodate larger boats visiting the area. So maybe there's a bit of a capacity issue um, with accommodating those larger boats. So we can count for that in the docks there, Dylan. Um, also, no facilities for transient boaters. Transient boaters. Okay. I now, think I called uh, that one. No facilities yeah, for, one. yes. Okay. Now, Lois slipped and I, I don't know if you'd like to, to expand on that at all. Um, if you had any additional thoughts that you'd like to speak to. Um, if so, please, please. Uh, Sure. So, so we see a lot of um, folks coming through Georgian Bay doing the Great Loop um, and, and coming from other parts of the Great Lakes. And they will typically go to Bay, they will go to Heinsen, they will go to other marinas, uh, particularly in Midland as well, because um, there's better facilities there, whether it's you know, they can get off their boats and have a barbecue on land. They have showers. They have, you know, washroom facilities. Because uh, it's nice if you're traveling by boat for an extended period of time to be able to get off your boat for a while. So there isn't a lot of um, dock space at the town dock to accommodate larger boats. Being on the outside wall just exposes them to uh, lots of waves and particularly the wind because the winds are typically westerly. I've actually had people uh, ask me where to stay. Okay. Lois, you're, you're coming in and out a little bit. Um, maybe. Sorry, so. I unfortunately have very unstable internet tonight. No so. problem. No problem. No, no. I appreciate you expanding on that. Um, you know, it's, it's, we did have a, a meeting with the technical advisor committee last week, 
and it was raised as well, just the choppy waters and how that is a, um, a constraint as well um, in that area. So, so thank you for, um, you know, uh, reiterating that. Um, okay, moving on to the next comment, uh, weakness. So we have a weakness, Dylan. Um, need more dock space, okay, for transient boaters. Washrooms, showers, new hey, okay, exactly <laughs> what Lois just mentioned. So having some more um, public facilities available to people coming in and off uh, the boats, um, you know, uh, public washrooms and showers, uh, looks like they need a bit of a facelift. So it's something that we can note on, uh, on our map here. Um, okay, moving down the line. Okay, Dave, although the dock lunch has been a mainstay for food and beverage destination, it would be nice to have a destination higher for a higher end pub or restaurant, um, which would be attractive for visitors. So maybe, um, you know, I, I kind of see that as an opportunity. So, um, you know, maybe for this still in, if we can just focus on the now and the current, but um, the restaurant, maybe restaurant potential or um, I, I'm not sure, but I think that's definitely something that can go on the, on the next activity and we'll move it over once we get there. It's a great point though. Um, you know, diversifying the, the food options and, and potential there. Um, okay, moving down the list. Um, so we have another weakness um, from John and Carrie. So that would be summer parking with trailers. Um, and can I, ex and I, can I expand on that? Absolutely. John, it's John yes. here. Hi. Yes, Hi. please. <laughs> um, we've been residents in town off and on for 30 plus years. Um, we are boulders for 40 plus years. Um, the town has done phenomenal things with the waterfront park in the last number of years. Looks amazing. Um, there, there are some concerns about this, this uh, boat ramp area. Uh, the boat ramp functions very well, as everybody knows, in the summer, but the parking for the ramp is is uh is a problem in the summer because you need space for your your vehicle and your trailer attached right, to, right. to park it so that whole area that you see in gravel is pretty much tied up through the summer uh period with with parked vehicles um cottage boats cottagers with boats uh use that launch ramp so their their trailer and car sits there most of the weekend when they're out at their cottage uh for water access uh cottages only um so that so to expand on the parking issue, um, the trailers and the and the vehicles take up a lot of space throughout the summer months, and not just summer, but right into late fall as well. Mm -hmm. um, there was that that point. Um, boat wakes are a huge issue uh, in the inner bay in Penetang. Um, personally, um, the boat traffic is getting very busy in the bay. Um, it would be something for the town or this committee to put forward a request to to look at a 10 kilometer hour speed limit inside the inner inner bay. Uh, every marina, all all summer long, that's all you hear is people broadcasting to boats out there, keep the wake down, keep the wake down. Somebody's going to get seriously hurt at right. some point. So that that might be something that we could add to the you know kind of wish list going forward. Okay. Um, and it, and it does affect the boats at the town dock significantly, the boat wakes. Um, and larger slips for, for transient boats and for seasonal boats would be, would be nice. We all know, we've all had the, the, the many foot-itis. Um, George, I know, was into boating a few years back. Um, and uh, boats are getting bigger. Um, not many people have small boats anymore, like small, I mean, by 20-footers. They're typically 30, 40, 50 feet. So if you have those larger docks, and we've lived at many towns all over the Great Lakes throughout my career, um, we can make this a transient destination for, for nice, like boaters, and they spend a lot of money. They do. They'll go into town, go out for dinner. They don't hesitate. It's a, it's a vacation for them at, at, at this location, and it could be a good draw for the town. Um, so those are some of the points. Uh, I have a lot more, but I think I'll... I'll limit it there and let other people speak. That's great. Thanks, John. And if you could just, you know, being an experienced boater, um, you know, and, and to, your, to your point about the um, accommodating, you know, space for bigger, larger boats, and, and there's certain areas that do that quite well. Is there anything that comes to mind right away of, of great examples? Of, of, of larger boats? that, that might um, Of docks that accommodate the larger boats very well. Oh, okay. Um, 
trans transient wise in the area. Yeah. Um, they're, the boats, as, as one of the other speakers say, are going to some of the private marinas now, uh, Heinsons, Beacon Bay, uh, Bayport, because they can accommodate 50, 60 foot boats. Uh, the loop, the loopers are a huge, uh, huge draw to this area. Um, these people um, move onto their boats for a year or two at a time and they, they live on their boats and they do what they call a loop and they, mm. they either leave from locations in the United States, come up the Eastern seaboard and go down, come through the Great Lakes and then uh, migrate down through the Mississippi, down, down to the Gulf again. So this is, there are hundreds of them in the system in the summertime. Well, COVID had an effect on it this year, but going forward, Imagine. I hope we see it again. Um, yeah. But there are very limited uh, areas. Now, the nice thing about the, the new town dock configuration here, the larger boats can sit on the outer, uh, on the outer wall at the marina. I've seen mm -hmm. them sit there, um, but they are subject to, to wakes, which is very annoying uh, and yeah. it can damage and it's a, it's a safety issue. Um, Absolutely. So those are, those are some more points, but there are, there are very limited large uh, transient slips at public facilities in the bay. Okay, thank you very much for, um, for the additional details. So Dylan, um, just to make sure we captured everything, so these were some weaknesses identified. Um, so obviously the summer parking with the large trailers, which I think you captured, um, boat, boat wakes, so maybe, um, you know, the suggestion of maybe, you know, some speed, um, installing some type of speed, which we can identify in the next activity activity too. I think that's a great um, opportunity that we can identify for the future, um, as well as the last one, uh, which is again, um, you know, considering the larger boat slips for, for large boats and, and more transient uh, boaters. Um, so we'll make sure that we catch that as well. Um, moving along, so uh, counselor, um, sorry, it cuts off part of your the rest of the counselor, <laughs> um, but uh, both visitors and transient boaters can have access to washroom and shower facilities. Excellent. So that was also raised previously. Um, Gary mentions that uh, the angle parking is not, did I mind repeating myself here? Maybe it's just... Uh, the whole area is not very parking focused. Okay, we're going to move on to Ross, Ross Cooper. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, rereading some older comments here. So the whole area is very parking focused. So it looks very car focused, um, vehicle focused, not uh, pedestrian focused. Good point. Uh, the waterfront access is excellent. So there would be a, a positive for our, um, for our map here. Um, and also not tied to Main Street and Park. So maybe a bit of a... a two constraints I see there. Am I going too fast, Dylan, or is that, uh, is that okay? Just making sure I get them all. Perfect. Okay. And again, I'm just kind of going through these because we have a lot of comments to get through. Um, but please, if, if I'm reading out your comment and you have some additional um, details that you'd like to, to speak about, please just, um, Feel free to interrupt me. And that goes for the Sajeki team and the, um, the town team as well. So, Mitchie, it's Ross Cooper, if I can. <laughs> take, of course. Yes, take, please, take, Ross. <laughs> take your lead. And, and you were on mine, so I, I figured I, I, I can. Um, yes. I, 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 you know, I do have a comment later on as well. But I, I really do believe, um, I look at this from the, from the vantage point that um, the, the town docks are paid for through the taxes of the local residents. And therefore, when I take a look at, at the positive things about the town dock and, and potentially where they can go in the future, I do it with a mindset that, that the priority should be on um, accessibility for residents um, and as a secondary only um, uh, providing opportunity for, for tourists. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe that's selfish of me, but... but and, and, I, and I did apologize to you, George. I, I, the last thing that I would hate to see happen in Penetang um, is that we turn this waterfront into a Wasega Beach. And I know Wasega Beach is also working on their waterfront and, and trying to do things differently. But um, I, I think myself and many other people came to this area uh, because it is a nice small community. It's a, it's a quiet community. Um, and I just hate to see that change and, and have it turn into, um, you know, the next Midway, CNE Midway, where we've got, you know, circus wheels and all sorts of 
uh, commercial activity down on the dock. So I, I think the positive side of that is that is that it is currently very uh, resident focused and, and uh, that to me is a, is a big positive. Okay. No, absolutely. There has to be that balance. And I think uh, you've raised a good point. If there, if there is going to be any consideration to, you know, um, interventions, especially if they're, if they're growth, it, it, you know, obviously the local community um, and residents need to need to be included in, in that, uh, the functioning of the site. So great point. Um, okay, looking at um, another, another counselor comment. So the tourist information center needs to be updated. And this was something that our technical advisory committee um, also mentioned last week. So um, there's an opportunity there. I guess we can eventually add that to our activity too. Um, moving on to Dave, can trees be planted around the perimeter of the sewage treatment plant to create a visual barrier? Um, it's a interesting uh, idea. So yeah, using some, some landscaping to, to create some type of buffer. Um, as a potential intervention. So again, that could be an opportunity, but I think it's worth maybe stating here um, as well, just so we don't lose track. Did you uh, want to add some something to that one, Dave? I heard some echoing in the background. No? Okay, going to move on. Um, okay, so can new facilities at Town Dock uh, the town dock uh, against the shops on Main Street? Sorry, Don Cooper, could you just clarify your comment there? Can new facilities at town dock work against yeah, shops? I was just one, wondering if, we, if we're going to be uh, putting in all kinds of little boutique shops and so on, is it going to detract from Main Street, which is having a, in COVID, certainly having a difficult time, but mm -hmm. I think traditionally has a difficult time in, in having facilities and, and shops that can support themselves. Yeah. We need to be careful. We don't, we don't rob Peter to pay Paul. No, it's, it's a fair point. And um, making sure again, that there's that balance between what exists and, and sort of the future of, of that space, right? And that site. So um, thank you for raising that. Um, okay, we, uh, I'm gonna try and wrap up um, and go through these last few comments quickly, just being mindful of time. And we do have the two other activities, um, tons of good feedback. Um, I don't know if anyone from the team has, the project team has any comments so far. If not, I'll just keep running through these guys. Hearing none, okay. So moving on to Lois's comments. So um, here's another one, Dylan, um, after you finished that last comment. Close proximity to downtown. Okay, so that's a plus. However, there's a caveat. Um, insufficient connectors to encourage people to go there. Um, so, you know, maybe perhaps an activity too, once we start looking at the opportunities, um, you know, if two sites are, are, you know, close together, but there's no continuity or, um, you know, visual wayfinding signage um, to help people get there, um, especially if you perhaps aren't are a tourist and haven't been to, to the town before, um, it's a fair point. Um, so that is something we can consider. Um, okay, Ross, very positive. Okay, great. Our waterfront is not Wasaga Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you know, it's it's fine. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh. Hi, Misha. Yeah. It's uh, Brian Cummings. Just Hello, Cummings. just some clarification on some like uh, uh, things that can be controlled, controllables, and non-controllables. Yep. A couple of th mentioned um, the water. Uh, boats and the speed of boats in the water. Mm -hmm. That's covered under the Canadian, uh, Canadian Shipping Act. And Penetang is considered a bay, not a harbor. So mm. there's, there's no control that can, be, that can be made in those waters because it's right. covered under that Shipping Act. Okay. Uh, the second one is the water levels. Uh, someone mentioned about the, the water being um, high in some areas. When we get, uh, with the water levels the way they are these days, um, we get uh, a, a certain wind and the parking lot can be full of water. So it's something that we, we should be looking at uh, when we're doing these types of deliverables as well. Mm -hmm. I've seen the um, Georgian Queen, that, that cement dock underwater before. So it, 
the water levels have come up quite a bit. And uh, it's one of those things we don't have any control over. Mm. Okay, thank you for, uh, for the, the details on that and just the additional context, that's, that's helpful. We'll make sure that's captured in our comments. Um, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna keep moving through these uh, comments. There was an anonymous uh, comment submitted. So the whole area is very parking focused, which um, was uh, mentioned earlier. Um, okay, we're gonna, I think we did capture that one actually, but thanks for raising it, Sarah. Um, so a major strength, um, most of the world's greatest tourist destinations are built around water access. Hmm. The fact that the town is on the Great Lakes um, is, a key, uh, is key to revitalizing the town. So that's a, a very a, a strong strength or a <laughs> uh, that, that is a great strength. Okay. Uh, a few others from, okay, I'm going to go through these really quickly. And you know what? Probably going to spend about two, three more minutes. Um, and we have all of these comments that we will incorporate into the um, photo uh, or the photos um, after, after this workshop. But we just want to be mindful of time and make sure that we have enough time for the other two activities. Um, so there is no flow to the parking. Uh, the pavement parking is often confusing, which is way to park. Okay, so again, that wayfinding navigation seems to be a bit of a, um, a bit of an issue in this area. Um, we should have a nice restaurant and bar with a glass railing to enjoy the waterfront view. So views are very important in, in um, you know, areas like this with the water. Up, you know, so as mentioned before too, with the buffer, the landscape buffer around um, the treatment plant. You know, um, there are some interventions that we can consider um, moving forward to um, with this with the adjacent uses and making sure the water's the really the star in this. Um, okay, so a few other um, comments from the counselor. Um, to diff very different types of waterfronts. Large entrance to asphalt parking takes up lots of valuable land. Two parking lots are not integrated. Um, surface parking for trailers take up a lot of space, as we've mentioned earlier. Um, close proximity of uh, wastewater treatment plant limits potential development. However, there is an opportunity that is ended with, which is a pr provide offsite lot for trailers, which is a interesting um, suggestion. So maybe some, um, you know, for those larger vehicles, maybe uh, a bit of off-site parking could be, could be an opportunity. You guys are already jumping to activity two. This is good. So we can pull a lot of these ideas over and, and save us some time. Um, okay, no wake size needed. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, again, thank you for all of your comments. Uh, I'm just going to open it up. If someone has something burning that they'd like to get off their chest, um, I, I'm going well, to open the floor to you right now. Um, however, we do, I acknowledge that we, we do have additional comments here and we will add those to the, um, to our diagram here, but does anyone have something that's just, they, they'd really like to share before moving on to activity two? Hi, it's, uh, Deputy Mayor Dubo. Hello. Hi everyone. Um, the entrance to the dock area, I think there's a lot of wasted space there. Perhaps that could be looked at, redesigned. Sure, some fashion to give more space. And another thing, um, making um, a square of some type available somewhere on the property, which could be a gathering place. When you visit in Europe, you see all kinds of squares that are in the middle of whatever, and they're a gathering place for farmers markets, uh, events that take place within the community. So that would be another thing I'd like to, to mention. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and one other thing, this is for Ross. Ross, the town dock is self-sustainable. Uh, we work very hard at having that facility pay for itself. So just thought I'd, I'd clarify that. Thank you. Thanks, Anita. Okay. All right. Um, so Dylan, do we have those? Uh, are we good with the comments there? Yeah, I think that one might go in opportunities. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. Maybe we'll just hop over and we'll add um, the deputy mayor's comment just right there as far as opportunities, um, a gathering place or a, a public square, um, which is a great, 
a great idea. And often, you know, these spaces can be flexible and not have a lot of, um, you know, hu huge investment involved. You know, you see these empty parking lots transformed into farmers markets, and it's quite incredible, um, you know, how those spaces can be transformed. So, um, I think it's a it's quite reasonable. Um, suggest we add that. Um, okay, so again, um, we've sort of segued into activity two. Um, speak now or forever hold your peace. Uh, and we're going to move on to the next activity, which is more opportunities and future focused. Any comments from from the town or Sajeki team or? I think there might be some in the chat that we've missed, but we will go back and Yes, 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 yeah. yes, absolutely. We will definitely add all of these um, following the, the workshop. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll just mention, if anyone doesn't hear their their um, their point read out, it doesn't mean that it's getting lost. It, it will make its way into um, our consultation report. Absolutely. And I, I can just say, you know, um, we've done a lot of these types of online, uh, you know, consultations, and it's, it's so refreshing and um, inspiring, really, to see so many um, comments from all of you. So thank you so much, and, and keep the comments coming as we move on to the next activity. Um, okay, so... Let's pop over to activity two there, Dylan. And um, as mentioned, activity one is really focused on current, um, you know, existing strengths, existing weaknesses. Now we get to dream a little bigger and think about, um, you know, as Deputy Mayor mentioned, opportunities, you know, considering gathering space um, somewhere uh, like a, a kind of like a public square. Um, that was our first one that we um, identified here. And, and we do understand that some were mentioned um, in the in the previous activity that we'll bring over later on but if there's any that we're going to start we're going to open up the chat now to a fresh start activity two and if, if people can start um you know providing some ideas opportunities or or challenges in the future uh which which we should be mindful of um in designing this this master plan then or the secondary plan rather um i'm sure dylan can add in a few as as the comments come in just from the previous activity Mishi Stu Spires here. Hi, Just Stu. A, an opportunity would be to. Hi, I, <laughs> I think we ought to look at moving the outer wall, if you will, of the dock as far out into the bay as we can do, and, and make it a floating break wall. Okay. That would be an opportunity great Stu. And, and Dylan just to um, just for reference so if you click on just left of the opportunities box that's when you can um, have a little message pop up it doesn't actually work on so if you just go right left of it right left of the big opportunities box yep yeah, right in there you can double click perfect thank you um, okay thanks Stu was there anything else you wanted to add there or, or uh, you good I, I see that Dylan typed in expanding the docks um, my, my thought was specifically that we uh, encroach further out into the bay. Okay. Awesome, thank you very much. Okay, um, so just looking at these comments, I think we can actually carry um, some of these forward to, to this activity as well, um, such as uh, signage, very important to be improved. Okay, so I think, you know, um, given uh, the comments mentioned earlier about, you know, that connection to, to downtown, um, that's, a, that's a, great, uh, it's a great point. Now, Councillor Cummings, I think you have your hand up. <laughs> I did, thank you. Um, I think there's an opportunity here um, during the summer months at least to take uh, some of that traffic, um, trucks and trailers, and put them in the parking lot at the curling club. Uh, the pathway is still there to go back to the dock, but at least we could alleviate some of that tra parking traffic. Okay, perfect. Okay, and I apologize if I don't, um, I actually can't uh, uh, Brian, see. Brian, with the, with the oh. curling club, discharge the parking? Sorry, what was that comment? I think he said uh, uh, it was Stu the here. I was just asking, uh, could, the, could the curling club uh, charge for the parking? Uh, well, Stu, that's a, that's a town parking lot, just so you're aware. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's keep going here, and uh, we as we have a lot of comments um, that I think we can be transferred over to this section. So. Um, Dylan, again, this was mentioned earlier, building a restaurant um, bar, um, you know, perhaps expanded restaurant opportunities or, you know, restaurants and bars. Um, and it says here, a level higher in case of flooding. So perhaps, you know, exploring some flood mitigation um, measures as part of this as well. Um, okay, we need to clarify the wake issue, who controls the water. Um, a boardwalk along the waterfront would encourage people to visit. Um, great opportunity. So um, a boardwalk, really improving the walkway right along the water's edge. Okay, another, another opportunity, again, um, reiterated, is the, the land available for off-site parking, perhaps for especially some of those larger vehicles. Um, <laughs> Mishi, I'm just going to note that the mayor has his hand up to speak. <gasps> oh! Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I, I can't. Uh, I can't see it in my view here. By all means, please, um, please speak. <laughs> Hi, Julia. Um, as uh, many of you know, uh, I was uh, actually born and raised in Penetanguishene, so I've seen the growth and I've seen the development. I've seen it all. I lived here when the population was three thousand five hundred, so I've gone through it all. And one thing. Many well, quite a number of years ago it is the strangest thing. We we had three hotels on our main street. Today we have no hotel at all, and I think it's something for me uh, that is very lacking. And uh, I think if we're going to look at possibilities, uh, let's look at maybe a small hotel down in that area, with an upper class dining, you know, better uh, dining than we have at the moment. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Yeah, you know, even um, in speaking to some of the uh, the TAC members, the Technical Advisory Committee members last week who have been in the community for many, many years, it's interesting to see the changes that have occurred, you know, over decades. So um, again, this is what this workshop is for, for sharing those insights with us who are developing this plan. So please, um, please do share those insights. We welcome that. Um, another point raised, Dylan, was um, encouraging small vendors. So maybe um, in addition to some other restaurant options, you know, um, mentioned here, ice cream and other types of food. <laughs> um, so it's fair. And, and I think, you know, one of the examples that we showed earlier that Dylan was speaking about the, um, the shipping containers, it's, it's an interesting, um, you know, uh, spin off of, of, you know, showing these sort of, um, they can be seasonal, but they can also be all year. Um, but also, you know, they allow for that small vendor space to, to sort of pop up in, in um, you know, different public spaces. Okay, what else do we have here? So many. Um, <laughs> overwhelming <laughs> amount. Um, okay, so another opportunity. There is desire and willingness from the community um, to improve, modernize, and grow penetanguishing. Interesting. Um, this was from Dennis. Dennis, did you want to expand on that at all? Okay, there. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so my point here is that I just think that there's a, a, a strong um, sense from the community at large that there's an opportunity here to really um, kind of get out in front and um, here's an opportunity to make an improvement, a huge improvement um, I just get a feeling as one community member that um, other communities around us seem to be growing. Um, you know, we've got dock activity and waterfront activity uh, happening next door in Midland. We've got activities that are uh, happening over to the west over in Collingwood and, and Wasega Beach. And it's like everybody's moving forward uh, but us. And I see this as a perfect opportunity to revitalize not only the, the town dock area, uh, but you know, you, once, you, once you start there and you make that a success, that becomes the catalyst 
to um, kind of reinvent our whole town and, and uh, you know, really get the whole Main Street um, going again. And as Mayor LaRue said, uh, you know, we used to have hotels and all kinds of things going on and uh, they just seem to slowly be kind of going by the wayside. And uh, I'm just such a strong advocate that this is a, such a golden opportunity to start at the town dock. And uh, it's not a case of reinventing the wheel. There's lots of communities all over the place that we can be looking in their window to see what they've done and learn from their successes. And this is just a, such an opportunity. Uh, I think a lot of people are excited about it. We hear lots of community members uh, are anxious about, you know, re redoing the arena and building a, a big rec center. And I think this just all fits together with it. And, uh, you know, if you build it, they will come. And uh, I, I just think this is an opportunity. There, there's so many things going for us here. Um, I've been here for 20, 21 years. And, um, you know, in 15 or more years ago, I know Deputy Mayor um, Anita uh, and uh, George Vettaboncourt and I was on the Economic Development Committee and we were having these same discussions 15 or 16 years ago. And I'm just anxious to see something really take off and I think there's an opportunity here to do it. Thanks so much for sharing, Dennis. Um, yeah, the waterfront itself is is just such a huge opportunity, right, that not every um, town or city has. So it's um, you're very fortunate to have that. Um, okay, again, we're just kind of moving down this uh, these comments here, but it seems to be that many agree with the mayor, um, you know, and, and what a great draw that would be. So, so thanks for sharing, um, you know, about, you know, even a, a hotel and, uh, and some of the opportunities um, on the waterfront, uh, restaurant feel. So what we're going to do, um, again, being mindful of time, <laughs> it's already 7.45, uh, we are going to take these comments and we're gonna ensure that they're, um, <laughs> right now we only have the opportunities in our, in our frame, but if, if Dylan can scroll out, we also have um, a big challenges box. And I think if you were mentioned um, throughout the, the comments as well as over in, in activity one, so we'll make sure that we bring those in and identify those and, and make sure that they're all, um, you know, captured, uh, you know, in our final version. Um, before moving on to activity three, which is a very quick exercise, does anyone again have any burning questions or ideas that they'd like to share with the group? Um, I was informed just now that there was a uh, R Stone uh, with his hand up. We're not sure who R Stone is, but um, R Stone, if you'd like to, to share your comment, um, you've been waiting patiently. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate that. A um, couple things. First off, uh, I appreciate the comments regarding the boat wakes. That, that is an issue out here on the bay. I recognize that it's federally, I believe it's federally regulated, the waterways, but I think there's a lot that the town could do in order to encourage cooperation amongst the boaters to control their weights. I think boaters are basically good people and uh, if they knew the, uh, the situation that they would do their best to accommodate, I think it's a, a messaging issue uh, as much as anything. Beyond that, I, I, I definitely agree with the mayor in regards to uh, the hotel uh, scenario. We need, there's such an opportunity, uh, you know, with this waterfront property, uh, to really make something. It's the gateway to the 30,000 islands. Like it's, th this is, this is really a tremendous opportunity. And I appreciate the fact that the town is actually looking at this right now because uh, there is so much that could be done with it to enhance the community overall. And I think what that comes down to is that we really have to uh, be cognizant of what is resident focused. Does resident focused mean that we have a boat launch, a public boat launch, or does resident focused mean that we do the best for the community from a tax base, from an employment uh, you know, perspective, all those things that come with investment to the area that we're talking about downtown. What it, looks, what it is right now, it's the same way as it's been for the last 40 or 50 years, and it's just spinning its wheels. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's unattractive. There is a lot of people who come, they launch their boat, and then they leave, and then they come back at the end of the day. I think there's huge opportunity for revenue, 
and economic uh, prosperity uh, just to develop the area downtown or what exists at the uh, at the town dock and area because that's prime real estate that is just begging for an opportunity to draw revenue and people to the community whether it be downtown uh, the Rotary Park is there. There's just so many things that could benefit from this. Uh, like I said, I really appreciate the fact that we're addressing this now because there's a world of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well said. Um, all right. You know what I think we're going to do um, is we do have an activity three, but I honestly don't think there's enough time to get a, a fulsome discussion going. And it's a very important activity. So if it's okay with Andrea and Sarah, maybe what we'll do, Andrea and Sarah, is we'll take this, <clears throat> excuse me, this activity, um, we'll, we'll put this activity online to the, um, the town's web, uh, the, the project webpage, and maybe, you know, an open and question. Now, I'll read the question to everyone just so they're aware of what it is. Um, but basically, it's in 20 years from now, how will people describe the town waterfront, town dock waterfront area? Um, and really, the goal of this activity was to think of words that come to mind. Um, you know, what land uses do you want to see? Um, very simply put, you know, like we're looking for three words or less. And this is going to help us craft the vision. And, and, you know, really, we're trying to build a vision that's about two to three sentences long um, that really, um, you know, uh, you know, is a snapshot of, of how, you know, um, you as, as the residents and, and you know, uh, town builders want to see um, the town dock in, in 20 years from now. So um, again, if, if it's all right with Andrea, maybe we can leverage the, uh, the online um, engagement uh, website and, and, and create an activity just to, to get some additional feedback, because I don't want to cut this one short. It's really important. Um, and with that, maybe we will um, turn it back to, to our presenting team, uh, David and, and Andrea, to finish it off and, and to say some conclusions and, and review next steps, if, if that's all right. Yeah, thanks, Mishi. Um, great conversation. And, and I was thrilled to hear all those wonderful ideas you guys uh, are coming up with. Um, you know, I think you, you, you've hit a lot of the points that we've been looking at it from a staff point of view that we see as opportunities, as we see as, as challenges, um, and, and recognize, we recognize the potential of this property, absolutely. We recognize that um, there's value and it's, it's the best waterfront on Georgia Bay, is, was my, is my line, and, and I think it absolutely is. So um, I think we can when leverage this property to be a benefit to the community for a long time by, by tackling this pretty important study to figure out what we wanna do uh, at the end of the day. Um, I would just sort of sort of uh, mention that we do have uh, staff and some other members of council on this call, um, as well as the the TAC committee. It was referenced a couple of times, so we have a couple of appointments from the uh, the public. So Stu Spires and Andy uh, Myers and Nick Maduras from the Dock Lunch, um, as well as council reps and staff, all participate uh, and help uh, provide some technical guidance to the study too. Um, I don't think there's anything else specifically that I wanted to, to say, but maybe I'll pass it over to David if there's something there, or, and I'd be happy to, to continue, you know, answering any questions that people might have. That's great. Uh, no, no, nothing specific on, on my part. I, I will go through some of the next steps, but I just really want to thank everybody for all of this input tonight. Th this was my first time using Mural. Um, I want to particularly thank Mishi and Dylan as well, too. I, I thought... You did a really great job facilitating, and I also really appreciate all of the comments from everybody that was here tonight. Um, uh, this is it's just really great input, and you, you don't know how it's going to work out when you're um, trying something different, being in a pandemic when everybody is, is separate, but it just is really great to hear everybody, I guess, come together virtually, but provide all this input because it's it's – um, very, very helpful, and, and we're very grateful for all of it. So, so thank you. Um, I am going to share this, my screen just one last time, um, just because I'll bring up next steps, and then I think I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Andrea. Um, and I will mention, I think it's a great idea to get the last activity up on the website, if, if we can do that, because that really is asking you what is it that you want to see out of this um, study and out of the town dock in, in, a, in a succinct way. So it's, it's 
I'm looking forward to hearing that input. But let me just pull up the slide, and it will be quick. But just in terms of where we are, so tonight um, was obviously the, the a session that is going to really input into the development of the vision and guiding principles for that. And it's also going to help us identify what I had mentioned as a series of big moves. And those big moves are really, what is it that we want to see guiding the, the future of the town doc and, and its, its connection to Penetang, but I think to, to the larger Simcoe County and, and, and to Georgian Bay and, and to the 30,000 Islands um, as, as a whole. So we'll take all of that input. Um, we're going to start to draft a master plan. Um, as I mentioned before, things will be moving pretty quickly, uh, but we'll be looking, it's, it's a virtual public consultation session, so it will be online, um, but we'll be presenting different options for a draft master plan and looking for feedback um, from everybody on that as well. And, and that will be posted in early March. So with that, I am going to stop sharing and I'll ask whether I, either Ed or Andrea has any um, sort of final comments that, that they want to make and um, again thank you yeah david thanks for that i'll just um sarah uh, marshall noted that she's just going to give some comments about accessing where some of this information will be so sarah if you wanted to to do that and then i will sort of round up and, and conclude tonight's meeting because we are right on time thank you andrea so i just wanted to clarify the website we're speaking of uh, you can access it through our penetangmachine.ca website. It's in the top right-hand corner. It's a button that says connect, or you can just, uh, in your Google or browser, you can just type in connectpenetangmachine.ca, and there'll be a page on that site that says town doc secondary plan study, and that's where all of this information will be, and there'll be a tool there where you can actually engage in a comment section and interact with each other about um, Kind of what we're talking about now and some of the branding that we want to do so feel free to leave your messages there um, you'll see comments uh, from myself and other town staff interacting with you um, as well as other residents who aren't in this meeting and that's all i have andrea and if, if i could just make a comment i just want to express my thanks i did a lot of listening tonight and i want to thank the team who did who did all the real work but you know the comments were very helpful to helpful to us and so we, we thank the attentive, attentiveness of council and the participation of council and, and, and the general public. And, and thank you in particular to, to your staff for, for, for really, really helping organize this. So great job, everyone. Thanks, Ed. Um, so yeah, just in summary, so, you know, David's provided what our next step is. I have all the contact uh, emails from all of you who reached out to me and registered for tonight. So you are now on our registration list and anytime we do anything, you'll get an email advising of future consultations or notices or, or uh, when documents have been uploaded for draft or for your review. Um, and just so to make sure that, you know, we mentioned the Connect Pen and Tank Machine website. So for your information, the, the team that's made up, the TAC team that they talk about is myself, um, the CAO Jeff Lees, Sherry Desjardins, who's our Director of Recreation um, and uh, our uh, Capital Projects Manager Jeff Hamlin, um, as well as our council reps from our planning committee and our recreation committee. So we have uh, Councillor Vadamoncourt from the planning committee and, and Councillor Cummings from recreation and community services sort of helping sit on as a, an advisory capacity on that. Um, but all of council obviously is participating. And I always forget, and she's not on the call, but I always forget to mention that this was a grant that we got through the County of Simcoe. So the County of Simcoe uh, sends a representative, Becky Breeden, who's an economic de development officer who sits on this committee too. So um, the Connect Pen and Tank Machine website, you know, all staff are really looking at it. And so participating, commenting there, you're really getting heard by, by the staff that you see here tonight. So with that, I don't know if uh, anybody has any last things to, to do or say, but uh, that's it. We do thank you guys so much for coming out and and uh, being part of this new virtual world of consultation. We do appreciate it.